Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, Jesus' name is worthy to be praised. If you believe it, why don't you jump on your feet, clap your hands all over this house. Come on, jump on your feet, clap your hands. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. Why? Because he is our God. We are his people. He is our shepherd. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus all over this house. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Why don't you take a moment to greet the person to the left and to the right of you. Tell them it's good to see you. Good to see you. Certainly good to be in the house of the Lord. Glory. Anybody come to lift up the name of Jesus? I said anybody come to lift up the name of Jesus? He's good. He's worthy. He's omnipotent. He's our God. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. When I woke up early this morning, my heart was beating right on time. I said, Lord, I truly thank you for opening up these eyes of mine. Then I went over to my window, and while looking through the train, once again I had to tell him, thank you, Lord, for let me see another day. Now the sun was bright and shining, though we were blowing not too strong. And in the treetop just a few feet away was a robin singing a song. Now I don't know what he was singing. But pretty soon he was on his way Who's to say he wasn't being grateful And said thank you for another day Everybody ought to Be thankful and Everybody ought to praise his name Yeah, yeah, cause if a robin can say thank you you can do it too. Now the, now the sun was bright and shining. The wind was blowing not too strong. And in a treetop just a few feet away was a robin singing a song. Now I don't know what he was singing. But pretty soon he was on his way. Who's to say he wasn't being grateful and said thank you for another day? Everybody on a praise Be thankful and praise Everybody on a praise day. Yeah, yeah, cause if a robin can say thank you. Oh, you ought to praise the name. Be thankful and praise the name. Everybody ought to praise the name. Yeah, yeah. Cause if a robin can say thank you, you can do it too. Oh, you are the name. Be thankful and praise the name. Everybody on a praise the same. Yeah, yeah, but if a robin can say thank you, you can do it too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Bless his name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. His everlasting name. Great is his faithfulness. Morning, morning by morning. It's new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. As the men were ministering, the Lord gave me this scripture, Psalms 42 and 5. It says, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? The word of the Lord says, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. It's prayer time in the house of the Lord. 
And oftentimes our spirit gets disturbed. And oftentimes the enemy allows us to get in a boat and that boat gets to rocky. But the word of the Lord said, why is your spirit disturbed within you? When you have a God who sits high. And all you have to do, he said, he said, why do you worry when you can't even add a single hair to your head? All you got to do is come and pray. All you got to do is come back to the one who can fix it. If your heart is broken this morning, if you're disturbed within, he will wipe your tears away. There's a friend in Jesus. We want to pray with you this morning. The altar is open for you at this time. Come on, let us pray with you. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you. We honor you because you're God and we're not. We thank you because you're all-knowing, you're all-sufficient. You're mighty God. You're the true and living God. Who is this King of glory? You are the Lord God, strong and mighty. Who is this King of glory? You're our God. Father, we thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We couldn't do life without you and we won't try. So here we are, Father, in the need of prayer this morning. Father, we thank you, God, that you're hearing us. We don't pray to a dead God or a deaf God, but you hear us. So, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray for these people here at this altar, Father, these your people that you know by name, Father, that you have called and you've chosen before the foundations of the earth, Father. These are your people. Here we are gathered, Father. You say where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst. And so, Father, we pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus, God, that you would be involved in the details of their lives, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're praying, God, that you you would heal their broken heart that you will mend the, the mended spirit or the broken spirit father in the name of Jesus that they will lift up their head father father knowing that their help comes from you father in the name of the Lord Jesus father father that they can wait in the going father for the, your word says father that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength father they shall mount up on wings like eagles and soar father in the name of the Lord Lord Jesus oh God I thank you father that this won't last always trouble don't last always but it is just for a season father so this temporary disturbance father in the name of the Lord Jesus father we thank you father that they will get through father they will triumph father this next season will be called triumph father father it won't look the same it won't smell the same it won't sound the same father in the name of the lord jesus but you're getting ready to do a new thing that's what isaiah said behold i'm doing a new thing can't you see in the earth father what, we, what you're doing father help us not to be so blind father or deaf to what you're doing father but father in the name of the lord jesus we will be ready for what you're getting ready to do in the earth father pour out your spirit father you said in the last days you'll pour out your spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy so in the name of the lord jesus we thank you lord god that you're doing a new thing you're pouring out on us father in the name of the lord jesus from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet father may they walk in healing may they walk in deliverance may they walk in peace in the name of jesus we thank you god because you're doing it you're doing it for us in the name of the lord jesus and we'll be so careful 
to give your name glory to give your name praise it's in Jesus name and the redeemed of the Lord said so and the redeemed of the Lord said so if you've been redeemed I dare you to open up your mouth and worship the king of kings on the count of three let out a Shabbat from your belly one two three open up your mouth The word of the Lord said, you shall live and not die. The word of the Lord declares that you have whatever you say. It's in your tongue. Life and death is in your tongue. You will live, sister. You will live and not die. The promise shall come to pass in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The only name that was given to man by which we can be saved. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we agree with heaven. It is so, and so it is. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise all over this place. Why don't you, as you're going back to your seat, love on somebody, hug somebody. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Ooh, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Do me a favor, grab your neighbor hand. Grab your neighbor hand. I want you to squeeze life into that neighbor hand. Look at him and say, neighbor, it will be well in Jesus' name. Come on, if you believe it, why don't you give God something? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we ask that you will turn your attention to the screen for our morning news and announcements. Streaming now. This is New Home News. Welcome to New Home Mount Megs, the home where we embrace, empower, and employ. Don't miss the beat on Sundays as we have many opportunities for you to stay connected, whether it be on the radio, in person, online, or on the CW at 11 a.m. Join us every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. for New Home Improvement as we continue to dive into the book, I Believe, by Tom S. Rainers. Make sure you grab your outline and join us at New Home Strong Virtual Facebook Group. The food drive will be from April 6th to May 5th. Monetary donations are welcome. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Sister Michelle Peterson. Youth ministry leaders, do not forget, immediately after service today, there will be a youth ministry team hangout. Food will be provided. See you there. This Saturday, April 20th, next step New members class orientation will commence in the modular building behind the Providence Center at 9 a.m. Mark your calendars to be there. Pray for our pastor as he will be traveling in the month of April on Wednesday, April 17th at 7 p.m. to New Providence Missionary Baptist Church for their revival. On Sunday, April 21st at 1.30 p.m. to Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church for their church anniversary. On Sunday, April 28th at 1.30 p.m. to St. James Mount Missionary Baptist Church for their family and friends day. Mark your calendars so we can support Pastor. A father-daughter dance will be coming soon. Stay tuned for updates and more. For all this information and so much more, 
Follow us at New Home Mount Megs on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube on demand. Head to our website at newhomemountmegs.org to stay updated. More 2024 coming soon. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. I hope everyone is having a hallelujah good time. But now it is time to go to the next level. You know, somewhere in the Bible I read mm, pretty, I think it was yesterday, the day before yesterday. God loves a cheerful giver. So let's be cheerful in our giving. My brothers and sisters, we can give by three different methods. We can give by give a fly. We can give by cash app, and we can do the old-fashioned way, the yellow envelope. But just be reminded that God loves a cheerful giver. So let's be cheerful. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing yeah, yeah. Just want to praise you yeah, yeah, ever and never for all you done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody, everybody, clap your hands. Just want to pray forever and ever. And ever for all you done for me, oh blessings and glory and honor they all belong. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Bless in me, yeah. Just wanna pray forever and ever and ever for all you've done. Blessings and glory. Everybody clap your hand. Everybody clap your hand. All belong blessings and glory and honor. They all blessings and glory and honor. They all yeah. Cut the music. Blessings and glory and honor. They are. Y'all sound good. Blessings and glory and honor. Yeah. Thank you, 
you, Jesus. One more. One more. Just for me. Yeah. I just want to pray. Come on. Forever. And ever. And ever. For all you done for me. He's been good. He's been just that good. Blessings and glory. And uh, they all uh, come on. Blessings and glory yeah. and honor. They all belong to you. Blessings and glory. Yeah. They are. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody standing. Everyone standing. Everybody standing. Right hand towards heaven. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, with a cheerful heart. Say, I sow my seed. Say, today, I planted in good ground. Say, I believe my needs are met. And my family is blessed. Say it like you believe it. Say, I'm expecting a supernatural harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise for this wonderful male chorus as they come to you again. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Are there any first time visitors in the house of the Lord? Any first time visitors in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, new home. Can we make our first time visitors feel welcome? First time visitors, if you would, take out your phone. We're going to ask you to send a text embrace to 41372. We won't bother you. We won't call you all week. We just want to say thank you for worshiping with us. Amen. You could worship anywhere in the city of Montgomery, but you decided new home Mount Meigs this morning. So we thank God for you. Come on, new home. Can we make them feel welcome one more time? Even for those of you that are watching online. Amen. One additional announcement for you this morning. Uh, if you are assisting with the funeral on tomorrow, we're asking that you will meet us right over here in this deacon's corner after service. Again, for everyone that is volunteering and assisting with the funeral on tomorrow, we're asking that you meet with us right over here after service. Amen. Amen. Anybody ready to go higher in the Lord? I say, are you ready to go higher in the Lord? Come on, bless the Lord for our men's choirs. They're coming. Jesus, I 
Anybody love the Lord this morning? I said, anybody love the Lord this morning? It's a good moment to worship. Just lift up your hands. Come on. Talk to the Lord. Say, I love you. I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you. 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 Yeah, yeah. Jesus, I love you. Because you can Find somebody, tell them I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Old school church said he heard my cry. Pit is my every groan. Long as I live and trouble shall rise, I'll hasten to his throne. Anybody love him because he'll show up in the middle? He'll show out before things are done? Hallelujah. I want you to grab your Bibles. While you're grabbing your Bibles, give God praise for this male chorus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Father, I stretch my hands to Thee. Anybody need them this morning? No. The I know. He died. Hallelujah. We draw thy self from me. No, the hell I I know. I need the old. I'm looking for the folk that need them. I need the every hour. I need the oh, oh, bless me now. My Savior, I come to, I come to Thee. Father God, we thank You for the moment that is ours to share Your Word with Your people. So I pray, dear Father God, that You give me strength, that You use me, Father God. To speak to your people. My simple and earnest prayer is God, less of Lee and more of thee. All of God's children shout, Amen. Amen. Grab your Bibles, Mark, Mark chapter 6. I really want to look at one verse. I'm going to read one verse and then we'll travel back to get those other ones. Media team, I'm sorry. I'm flipping the script. Uh, Mark chapter 6. Let's so look at Mark chapter 6. I want you to look at one verse and then I'll double back and get some more. Look at chapter 6. I want to look at verse number 51 and 52. 51 and 52. English Standard Version says, And he got into the boat with them, 
and the wind ceased. They were utterly astounded. Verse 52 says, For they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. That'll be all. I'll just read that. Look at your neighbor real quick. Say, neighbor. neighbor. We're still in the series. Never Never enough. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And he got into the boat with them. And the wind ceased. They were utterly astounded. For they did not understand about the loaves. But their hearts were hardened. What's interesting, children of God, is that the portion of text I read to you happens after Jesus has walked on water. After Jesus' children were scared on the water. After Jesus allowed Peter to get out of the boat. After Jesus had caught Peter as Peter loudly called for the Lord. After Jesus had walked Peter back to the boat. Then the disciples begin to understand a lesson that Jesus taught them before they ever got into the boat. What happened before they got into the boat is a myriad of occurrences, different scenes, and different shifts. I want you to notice the reality that in verse 30 of Mark chapter 6, John the Baptist dies. He does not die because of natural causes, but rather he's put to death because of the assignment and anointing that's on his life. I don't want to pause here too long, but do you, you do know or you should know that when you're anointed and called to do something impactful, people will do all that they can do to kill you before you finish what God called you to do. You do know that when you are doing something for the Lord, the enemy got a problem with you. So John the Baptist dies and Jesus is his earthly cousin and he could be dismayed. But Jesus makes up his mind that I can still do ministry even through my misery. He understands that this is not a moment for me to sit down on my assignment. This is not a moment for me to throw in the towel concerning what I have to do. Jesus understands things will happen, but we got to keep on pleasing God. Things will happen, but we got to keep on playing our part. Things will happen, but we got to keep on being busy about our father's business. So as Jesus continues to move while grieving the life of his cousin, uh, 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 John the Baptist, Jesus finds himself still teaching and preaching and as Jesus Christ is teaching and preaching verse 33 let us know that he's preaching so good a crowd is following him he's preaching so good that people are beginning to to get closer to him and what we see is that the disciples or the deacons of Jesus church turn around and say pastor Jesus it's getting dark outside Jesus we ain't got no food Jesus ain't no churches nowhere near us Jesus we ain't got nothing nothing to feed them we need to send them away to get their own food but Jesus says no we're not sending them away to get food I'm sending you to go get the food it's in this moment that they take those two pieces of tilapia and those five red lobster biscuits and they feed over 5,000 it's in that moment that Jesus is telling us that too many of us are insightful yet insensitive too many of us know the facts but we don't have any faith too many of us want to do the works of God but we want to do it when we want to and what God came to tell somebody today is uh, I know what you see but you ain't heard what I said I need you to go get the food uh, and feed them check this out I love it I'm not in my text yet I found out that the biggest issue that we have with finding contentment is the reality that most of us have selective amnesia yeah you tell your children that but you ain't even thought about the fact that you got that problem too every now and then you forget what God did for you and that's why you're so mad and so angry and so frustrated with what God's given to you I believe it's now time for us the saints who can testify that God's been good to us to remember what all he's done for you if you forget where you came from you won't be able to give them praise for where you're going but I wish I had at least 500 folk up in here 500 folk on the live that can give God praise from where you came from come on I wish you just 
just give him the best shot you can give him and give him praise because he brought you too far for you to act like you brought your I wish I had somebody up in here that could go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs because you know if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side you don't know where you'll be y'all playing with me can you nudge your neighbor and say neighbor I didn't always have it like this thank you God from where you brought me from check it out this is good to me because what we understand is that most of us are good when life is good but when life gets difficult we forgot who brought us through Y'all ain't with me. See, see, we quick to throw in the white flag when things ain't going right. But you forgot it was not you or your degree that it got you when times were good. It was nobody but Jesus. And so, he says to them, whatever you do, don't forget what I've done for you. I want you to understand that life will not always be peaches and cream. Life will not always be uh, three scoops of chocolate turtle and a waffle cone at Brewster's. Life will not always be Taco Bell, number seven chicken quesadilla. It won't always be what you want it to be. Life is the shifting of seasons. I'm sometimes up, I'm sometimes down, almost level to the ground. Life will switch up on you. Old church sung the hymn said, time is filled with swift transitions, not on other, on move can stand. You got to build your hopes on things eternal and whole to God's unchanging hand. Life will switch up on you. Not only will life switch up on you, folk will switch up on you. Yeah. I heard y'all, y'all got some cousins like I do, huh? Every now and then, they love you one day and they hate you tomorrow. They on your side this day, the next day. That matter of fact, not even the next day, a few hours later. Y'all know Bonquisha and Tonisha, come on. Life will change. But we got to make sure that we don't have selective amnesia. If you can remember everything that went wrong, you ought to remember everything God did to make it right. Because God will allow you to go through just so he can get to you. And what God is saying is, sometimes I got to put you through a storm because I just taught you what you needed on the shore. Come close. Lean in. He says to us, the biggest issue that we have is that we learn lessons when things are going right, but we don't apply them when things start going wrong. We forget to apply what we have learned when things get wrong. Y'all playing with me. Come close, my people. We are the type of people that we praise God while everything's right. But as soon as a little something go wrong in our life, we start talking to everybody else except for God. And at some point, you got to make up your mind that if he held me up when things were good, he'll hold me together when things get bad. All of us will deal with problematic moments. All of us will deal with pressure moments. All of us will go from one season of success to eventually having a season of struggle. Because if there's no struggle, there will be no success. And, and, and what I've learned, child of God, is that you can't lose your mind when things go wrong. What I've learned, child of God, is that that's the moment you ought to really lean on the Lord. That, that's the moment you ought to really read your word. That, that's the moment when you ought to really make sure that you're talking to God. It's interesting because uh, 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 they're looking at this moment and, and what we're finding out, family, is that what we learn today is how to handle hard times. We, we learn how to, to handle the moments that are so pressured. And I got to pause here parenthetically because some of y'all uh, have grown in mature faith. And you know without a shadow of doubt, you got to learn how to thank God even for your struggle seasons. You, you, 
you, you got to thank God even for the moments when you're wounded and you're dealing with pressure because it's in those moments that God birthed stuff out of you that you didn't even know was in you. You don't know you strong till you go through something. So, 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 so he says, I have some principles to share with you about how you view your problems. He said, because the problem is that you think your problems are often bigger than what they really are. And, and, and so he says, I, I, want you to, I want you to get these principles. Here it is. The first principle is, uh, when you look at your problems, uh, you should look at every problem as potential for God to get praise. Okay, okay. God is going to get the glory when you make it through the test and you get a testimony. I need y'all to hear me. I need y'all to hear me because we got to stop this sugar-coated theology. We got we to gotta stop being paperweight Christians and we got to learn that we're going to have to go through but God ain't left us. You can't get a testimony if you don't go through no test. The first principle is Sometimes God will let you go through just so you can learn to give him glory. Now, now everybody can't hear this because some people uh, just don't want to go through nothing. But, but, but I want you to hear what's happening in the text because I believe all of us have been here before. The disciples, the deacons look at Christ and they say, Christ, uh, uh, there's no food. There's no facility. We ain't got no finances. Bad grammar, but good preaching. They saw the problem, but Jesus saw the opportunity. Can, can, I, can I tell you, uh, I love being around the old saints, uh, Deacon Rollins, because the old saints, they always tell it like it is. You know, you get around the old saints, you tell them, I'm dealing with this, and I'm dealing with that, and I'm dealing with that. They say, baby, just hold on. Watch God show out for you. They say, I've been through that before too. And, and, and so what we hear is, is that we must understand that although sometimes we see it as something that's depressing, God sees it as a moment to teach us who he is. He is Jehovah Jireh. And what God is saying is, oftentimes you got to know when your back's up against the wall, all you got to do is know that I need you to call out to me because there's not a friend like the Lord. Holy Jesus. And I want to tell somebody, you know, oftentimes when times get hard, we begin to question our existence. We, we begin to question our purpose. I want you to know that, that it's not in moments of peace that you know you found your purpose. It's in moments where things begin to become problematic that you know you're stepping on the right tools and, and going down the right alleyway. And I just want to tell whoever that might be under the sound of my voice, you need to know that there's purpose on your life. Stop looking for validation from other people. Stop waiting for people to like and love what you put out and just keep doing what you do. I wish you just help me right through here. Put your hand on your chest and say there's purpose on my life. There's purpose on my there's purpose on my life. I, I don't need you to smile at me. There's purpose on my life. I, I, I don't need to be popular. <laughs> There's purpose on my life. I don't need you to like my status. There's purpose on my life. And my purpose ain't your purpose. And your purpose ain't my. I wish I had somebody up in here who shot. There's purpose on my life. Here it is. Um, the first thing you must understand is that the problem has so much potential for God to get some praise and some glory out of it. But, but let me tell you this. Um, because, because that's not the only principle he, he told me. He said, uh, there's another principle uh, that y'all need to learn. Uh, Jesus legit. Uh, we was texting. And uh, he told me. It showed up in red letters. He, he ain't got an iPhone or an Android. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Just straight red letters. Huh? Uh, heaven mobile. Heaven mobile. And he, he told me that the other issue is. That we must learn the principle that our problems must be put in the proper place. He, he tells us, he tells us that too many of us are dealing with things 
and we're mad at him huh, when we ought to be mad at ourselves. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Y'all quiet. Can I tell you why you ought to be mad at yourself? N number one, because you did it. Y'all act so bougie at 10 o'clock. Just go ahead and admit it. I did it. I did it. And sometimes you in struggle seasons because you're reaping what you sow. I'm, I'm looking for some amens because, because I need some folk to realize today you can't plant watermelon seeds and get grapes. You shall reap what you sow. Be not deceived. God is not mine. You are dealing with it because it's your fault. I admit it that I did it. Didn't mean to let you down. Jesus turned my life around and give me a no. Now, how many of y'all can testify I got another chance? Now, 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 I can't sweep through the city without, without mentioning this five letter word. No, six. Six letter word. <laughs> Somebody shout, repent, repent. Because you can't keep doing the same thing and thank God going to keep blessing you. You can't keep saying the same stuff and think God going to turn it around. We're, we're in a dispensation where people talk about grace, 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 grace. And, and, and I want you to know, uh, I ain't never bought no grease that ain't never run out. At some point, the grace is going to run out. You need to do what you're supposed to do. All right, check this out. Back to my text. You got to put it in its proper place. The text tells us that as Jesus Christ was performing the miracle of feeding the 5,000, Jesus Christ had the disciples go to the little boy. The little boy had two little sardines and five little whole cakes. I said whole cakes, all right? Y'all don't know about that. Barley loaf. Jiffy mix. But, but, but the cornbread swapped hands four times. It was in mama's hands when mama made it. It was in the little boy's hand when he was traveling with it. It was in Andrew the disciple's hand when he got it for Jesus. And then it was in Jesus' hand. Whatever you do, you got to make sure that you put your problems in the right place. It was in the boy's hand. It was in mama's hand. It was in the disciple's hand. It was in Jesus' hands. And in every last one of their hands, it was something different. When it was in mama's hand, it was just a little snack for the boy. When it was in the boy's hand, it was supper. When it was in the disciples' hands, it was a suggestion for Jesus. But when it got to Jesus' hand, it was all sufficient. All I'm telling you is, whoever hand you put it in, make sure they can put it back in the hands of Jesus. He's the only one who can fix your issue. He's the only one that can shift your circumstance. He's the only one that can make your problem better. I wish I had somebody up in here who could shout, I put it all in his hand. How do I know that you can put it in Jesus' hand? I hear you in the back. What's so different about his hands? Your hands are small. His hands are big. Y'all remember, he got the whole world in his hand. Your hands are limited, but his hands are unlimited. Your hands are finite, but his hands are infinite. If you put it in God's hands, everything's going to be. So can, I, can I tell you uh, that there's a few of y'all that's on hush, hush, quiet right now? 
Because you, your truth is you put it in Shaquilla hands, Tonquanita hands, Facebook hands, IG hands, and it still ain't made it to God's hands. Can, can, can I help you real quick? Right now, you can say, God, I give it to you. And I promise you, God knows what to do with whatever you put in his hands. When you put it in God's hands, you won't get it back the same way you gave it to him. It's necessary for us to know that we got to give it to him. Somebody shout, give it. All right. Can, can I tell you the problem with some Christians in, in the church of, of the Lord in the 21st century? We don't really give it to him. Come, come here, Doc. We don't, we don't give it to the Lord. See, this is our problem. But instead of giving it to him, we let him touch it. You ain't going to touch it? Touch it. Grab it. No, don't pull it out of my hand because Jesus ain't going to pull your problem out your hand. He's going to give it to you. But instead of us releasing it and giving it to him, we playing tug of war. Every time he try to get it, we want it back. Then we come back to church on Sunday and say, touch it again. Then we tug of war all week. We want it back. We say, touch it again, Jesus. Then we tug a war with it all week and we want it back. And all I came to tell somebody is you got to let it go. I wish you look at somebody and say, let that thing go. Let it go. Let it go. Let Jesus have it. Let Jesus have it. Whatever it is, give it to the Lord. Release it in prayer and leave it right there. Let it go. Stop, stop. Stop playing tug of war. Because when you release it to God, God going to tell you what you need to do. And you need to do it. And watch God change things. Principle number one, there's potential for God to get praise in your problems. Principle number two, you got to learn to put your problems in the proper place. Principle number three, you got to know that there's always possibilities of provision and proof. Somebody shout provision. Now shout proof. I got to leave y'all. It's time. Uh, and I want you to know that what God is trying to tell us today is that he can do the same for us that he did for the disciples. But God wants us to learn the lesson so that we're not struggling in our next season. We can't keep saying that there'll be more in 2024 and we're not preparing for what comes with more. I want y'all to get this because there's always a side effect for every blessing. And every time you get blessed, you're going to have to deal with some opposition. Every time you get blessed, you're going to have to deal with the enemy rearing his head. Every time you get blessed, he's going to try to stop you uh, from being who God called you to be because he doesn't want you to have uh, what God's trying to give to you. So, so here it is. I love this because the text lets us know that God has the ability to give us overflow. It tells us that not only did he feed the men and the women and children that were not counted in the 5,000 with the two fish and the five loaves of bread, but it says that they had leftovers. Somebody shout leftovers, leftovers. Now, 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 let me tell you something. I'm a fat boy. Uh, and one thing I know about leftovers is uh, it's when you don't eat all that you had and you got some more left. I had to educate some of y'all. Y'all too young. You don't like leftovers. Come closer. I, I want you to know there's nothing like putting leftovers in the microwave because good leftovers taste better the next day. Check this out. Check this out. What I learned is the text does not just tell them that their bellies were full and baskets were full, but it tells us that there were 12 baskets. Somebody shout 12. There were 12 baskets and there were 12 disciples. And what God was saying to them is that when you serve me, I'll allow you to get the overflow. 
All right. I, I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I need the folk that ain't that ain't scared to tell their testimony that even right now I'm living on leftovers. I, I'm living on leftover prayers. I'm I'm living on leftover blessings. I'm I'm living on leftover songs. I'm I'm living on leftovers. I, I might not have all other folk got, but I'm living on my leftovers. And so the lesson is over. We can shout over the full baskets. We can shout that every disciple had their own. They didn't have to eat off of anybody else's blessing because God blessed them all individually. But now it's lesson time. Jesus told the disciples after feeding 5,000 men, not including the women and the children, I need you to go Get in the boat and go to the other side. Y'all don't mind if I preach it. He walks up to the mountain. The disciples are attempting to follow him. Jesus just completed another miracle. And he says, disciples, go get in the boat. I'll meet you on the other side. The disciples didn't want to go. King James Version says he constrained them to the boat. Which means he forced and made them get in the boat. They got in the boat. Jesus is praying on the mountain. They're going halfway through their journey. And all of a sudden there's a thunderstorm. The winds begin to wave and the waves begin to beat across the side of the ship. And because the disciples forgot the lesson he taught them. They begin to get fearful and afraid. As they got fearful and afraid, they're beginning to just panic and try to figure out how they can fix it on their own. Can't you just imagine Jesus on the mountain looking down at his students that he just taught a lesson to and he sees them down there panicking, crying, hollering, and he says, oh, I got to go down here and get them again. Can I tell you that's the problem with the church? We come to church and learn, but when we leave and we're tested, we don't know how to apply what we just learned. Jesus gets up and he walks out on the water. You got that scripture for me? You know where it's at this time because I ain't know. He walks out on the water. He's walking on the sea. Little portion of the text we often pass by. Mark chapter 6, 48, it says, and Jesus meant to pass by them. I wish I had a church because y'all done heard this story plenty of times, but you ain't read that, have you? Jesus did not plan on stopping at the boat. There's tension there. The tension is, uh, Jesus, I didn't ask to get out here in the first place. You told me to get on the boat. Not only did you tell me, you constrained me. You made me get on the boat. You told me to go to the other side. But now you're here. You see me struggling and you didn't mean to come to me. There's tension in the text, child of God, because all of us must understand that after the teacher has taught the lesson, at some point they got to turn their back and let you take the test. The question is, how you going to act during testing time? Are you going to lose your mind or are you going to hold on to what God said? How, how are you going to act during testing time? Are, are you going to panic or stand on the promises of God? How are you going to act when the test comes your way? He says, I didn't mean to even go to the boat. Disciples out there struggling, but he meant to pass them by. I text Jesus back. He said, now Jesus, you're my big brother. I love you. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how in the world could you put us in situations and not even desire to come help us? How, how'd you allow this moment to be? You didn't even desire. You weren't planning on stopping. You planned on just walking to the other side. I'm screaming and hollering, and you just walking. Jesus said to me, you got to understand that I told you I'd meet you on the other side. 
I never told you I was getting in the boat with you. Okay, all right, all right. Let me make it make sense. I was on the short bus too. Y'all lean in a little closer. Here it is. The Lord is saying that you got to give me an invitation if you want me to step into it. My only job is to make sure I do what I said I was going to do. And I wish I had somebody up in here who'd realize uh, that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, but every now and then, you got to invite him into your situation. I wish I had at least a hundred folk right through here that knew that you needed God to step into your life. And your testimony and your cry right now is, God, come see about your boy. Come see about your girl. Come holler at me. Come check me out now I want you to get this because I love the text Jesus is walking on water he meant to pass them by but then he hears Peter cry out from the boat Peter said Lord is it you if it's you you gotta bid me to come yeah yeah and he says that when Jesus got close to him Peter began to lose his focus I wish you just nudge somebody and say, stay focused. Peter began to drown. He began to drown in the sea. But Peter opened up his mouth. He did not say, Father God, I need you. He did not say, Lord, we come to thee. Head bound and body bent. All he said was, Jesus, save me. And I wish I had somebody who knew that it did not take all that extra stuff. But sometimes you just got to holler, Jesus, save me. And the Bible says, Jesus reached down and he lifted him up. Lord have mercy. Y'all should make me preach hard this morning. I believe that somebody's testimony that Jesus reached down and he picked me up. Picked me from the club. Picked me up. Picked me up from the street. Picked me up. Picked me up out of the gang. Picked me up. Picked me up out of low finances. Picked me up. Picked me out of low self-esteem. I need some help through here that could just somebody help me and wave your hand at your boy and say he picked me up but check it out now I gotta get to my clothes uh, because the Bible says uh, that finally uh, Jesus went back to the ship uh, he walked them uh, he walked them to the boat uh, he got into the boat with them uh, and they got to the other side uh, and they were they were utterly astounded uh, because the winds begin to cease uh, and the waves begin to rock uh, because the teacher got in the boat uh, it was testing time was over he meant no more testing now because the teachers in the boat but what I love about the text is is that the text says that the disciples looked at each other and they said now we understand the lesson of the loaves and I wish I had somebody who can testify today that when you get over on the other side now you know that God gave you proof uh, and he gave you provision uh, he gave you provision uh, and he gave you proof uh, there's somebody here uh, sitting down on your boy uh, because you don't know where the proof is uh, I need you to look down at yourself uh, and say I am I am proof uh, I should have been dead and gone uh, but look at what uh, the Lord has done uh, I I am proof I could have been dead sleeping in my grave I am I am proof he healed my body yes he did I said he healed my body I am proof I need you to grab somebody grab them by the hand hold their hand and say neighbor you are proof you got blood running and in your veins tell your neighbor say neighbor you are proof you got breath in your body tell them say neighbor you are proof you got mind that's been regulated and God will 
give you proof. You ain't got to worry. You ain't got to fret. If he did it before, if he did it before, he can. Lord have mercy. High five somebody. Say he can do it again. I don't care what you're going through. God is able. Ain't he able? I said he's able. Ain't he able? I got one more thing. I got to encourage somebody. I got to tell y'all that times will get rough. The going will get tough. But be not dismayed. Whatever. 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 Be the tide. God will. God will. Won't he take care of you? Won't he make a way for you? Won't he make the enemy your footstool? Won't he take you higher? Can y'all shout with me? Because God is able. I need you to just grab one more. Grab one more. I said grab one more. I said grab one more. And say neighbor, whatever it is, God is still able. If you know he is, uh, you ought to put your hands together. If you know he is, uh, you ought to open up your mouth uh, and shout thank you. Yeah. Look at somebody say, learn the lesson. Many of us can't be content with where we are because we've forgotten what God has done for us. God says, if I did it for you at the beginning of the chapter, I can do it again for you at the end of the chapter. He says, if I did it in one verse, I can do it in the next verse. Ain't no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he can do the same for you. Now is the moment, now is the time Somebody needs to know the Jesus that I'm talking about. This is your moment to get to know him. Somebody needs to make the decision to be connected to what God is doing. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your day. There's nothing better said than know with Jesus. He will pick you up and turn your life. Come on, y'all put those hands together as they're coming. You want to know him. Get to know him. Oh, don't wait for tomorrow. They just come. Hallelujah. There's nothing better say. Nothing better than knowing Jesus. He gets sweeter. Sweeter as the days go by. Do, 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 do. You ought to know him. Get to know him. Don't wait for tomorrow. Today just come. Y'all come on, help me. Everybody lift your voice and say, come on. Come on. Right now. Today just come. Yeah. Everybody open your mouth and say, come on yeah come on come on come on right now today just come yeah look down your road for me one good time look at somebody tell them come on come on right now Today just come, he will pick you up, he'll turn your life around, the Lord will pick you up and turn your life around, he will pick you up, turn your life around.
your life you want to know him say get to know him don't wait for tomorrow trouble in my way have to cry sometimes so much trouble have to cry sometimes I lay awake at night yeah but that's all right I heard him say Jesus yeah after a while stepped in the furnace long time ago Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego yeah yeah they weren't worried yeah this I know I heard them say Jesus Y'all help me. Put in your hands. If you know God is able, yeah. Come on, clap those hands. Come on. Yeah. One more time, just for me. Trouble in my way. Have to moan sometime. Yeah. So much. I have to moan sometimes. I lay awake at night. Yeah, but that's all right. Yeah, I heard him say, Jesus. After a while. Pastor Walker and New Home family. We have the following individuals who's coming to join our family. Uh, when I call your name, can you please stand? We have Christine Stovall, Christian Experience, Caitlin Stovall, Baptism, Top, Top, Sister Smith, Baptism, Tiara, I think that's how you pronounce her name. And we also have the following individuals who are coming for prayer. Destiny Williams, the Tifa Dupos, and Toquisha Davis. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise on him one more time. Amen. We definitely want to make sure that you know without a shadow of a doubt, that we're grateful that you made the move to be connected with this ministry. It's our prayer that through this ministry you'll be blessed and you'll be a blessing to the community. It's our desire to do all that God has called us to do. We're a church that embraces people. Where they are, we empower people with the word of God and we employ them to do the works of God. So whatever you do in the secular, I believe there's room for it in the sanctuary. Because all of us are made better because you're here. New home, what do we say? Welcome home. I believe they gave you a card with all the information on it. They're going to give you some more information. Uh, they're going to walk you through connecting with us on social media and everywhere else. Y'all been dating this church for a while. Y'all have heard this whole spiel. We're a church that loves participators and not just spectators. We have so much work to do, not just in this community, but in this city and in this state and in this world. And we need people that are ready to serve. So can we give God praise for them? They joined under Christian Experience. You are now dismissed at this time. Going that direction. My bad. Assimilation ministry over there. Baptism. Praise the Lord. If you baptism, well, praise the Lord. I heard, but I didn't hear. Y'all can turn that down some for me. I heard, but I didn't hear. Okay. So I need to talk to the two of you all. Y'all came for prayer. Prayer. Can y'all sit down on this row for me? I need to talk to these baptism candidates. They're making a decision to give their life to Christ. And that's not a small matter. It's not a small matter. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. It's the best decision you ever could make. It's one of the hardest decisions for many to make. Because the truth is this, and I don't sugarcoat it. Whenever you say yes to God, you're saying no to the devil. And the devil don't like folk to tell him no. But God is stronger than the enemy every day of the week. I want you to simply just confess out of your mouth what you believe in your heart. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, sir. Yes. Do you believe that he hung, bled, and died for your sins? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Do you believe that he rose early Sunday morning? Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Do you believe that he's coming back looking for you? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Will you serve him for the rest of your life? Absolutely. They said, absolutely. Can we give God praise for them? Now, the Bible says upon the confession of your faith and believing in your heart, then you're saved. You're saved right now. We're going to prepare the waters of baptism for you. I want to pray with you first, and I want you all to repeat this prayer after me as loud as possible, okay? Say, Father, Father, Father I come. I come. In need, in need of salvation. In salvation. Father, Father, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my life. Make me over. Make me over. Make me right. Make me right. And I will. I will. Follow you. Follow you. For all the days. For all the days. Of my life. Of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise for them. Amen. So proud of the two of you and what God's about to do in your life. And this time you can go with assimilation ministry. Y'all give God praise for them one more time for me as they walk in that direction. Coming for prayer, if y'all can stand for me. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe those who have uh, belief and faith that God is going to intercede on whatever it is that they are going through, whatever they're dealing with, I need you to stretch your right hands towards the altar at this time. Father God, we come to you now thanking you, dear God, for who you are. Thank you, you for God, who you've always been to us. And it's our prayer, God, that you'll be just that, who you are. Show up in their lives, Father God. Show up in their circumstances, Father God. Redirect, Father God, moments where they feel weary. Give them strength. Father God, move in them and move through them. Lower their anxieties and, and increase their faith in you. God, it's our prayer that your promises shall show themselves in their lives. That God, everything you said that they shall be, that's what they will become. We pray, Father God, that you give them a glimpse of their future, God, and you allow them to know that nothing is able to, to come against them as long as God is with them. No weapon that is formed against them shall be able to prosper. God, it's our prayer that you continue to deepen their faith to understand, Father God, that you are the God of an encore. So if you did it for mama, if you did it for daddy, if you did it for grandmama, you can do the same thing for them. Father God, it's our prayer that even in this moment, as tears fall, Father God, that you are the God who can wipe away every tear that falleth from their eye, Father God. In moments where they feel that all hope is lost, God, it's my prayer that you'll strengthen them, Father God. Strengthen their mind, strengthen their body, strengthen their faith, Father God. Strengthen wherever they feel there's lack, God. It's our prayer that in this moment, Father God, as we are stretching our hands towards the altar, the strength that you've given us is even falling on them. The anointing that you've given us is even falling on them as the oil was placed on their heads father God we know the oil won't fix it but we know that it carries the residue of the prayer power and as we pray father God we pray that you show yourself mighty and strong as we pray father God we pray that you move like never before as we pray father God we pray that you shift this situation that you fix it father God you turn it upside down and right side up God move it like never before now God we thank you now God we thank you. thank you now God we thank you, thank you because we don't pray amiss Father God but we pray with expectation we know you're about to do it in the mighty name of Jesus we know you're about to shift it in the mighty name of Jesus we know you're about to move it in the mighty name of Jesus and God as we pray 
we're not going to be quick to hang up the phone because we know you got instructions for us. We're going to put some legs to this prayer. We're going to do what you've called us to do. But I decree and declare over the three of their lives, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard the great things that you have in store for them. That God, their best days are still ahead. That Father God, you're about to blow their minds, not just because they came to the altar, but because they're putting their problem in your hands. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And God, we thank you yes, sir. that as you move, that as you shift, that as you make it better, we'd all be ever so careful to give you glory. We'd all be ever so careful to give you the credit. We'd all be ever so careful to give you the praise, the honor. And so, God, we won't wait till the battle is over. We'll shout right now. We'll, we'll praise you right now. We'll clap our hands right now. It's already done in the name of Jesus. It's already done in the name of Jesus. It's already done in the name of Jesus. Let every child of God shout amen. Amen. Amen again. Hallelujah. God is able to do exceeding abundantly of all that we could ask or think. If you believe it, give God the best praise you can. All right. I want to pause for the cause. There's some important things happening this week, and I need to bring it to your remembrance. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to be celebrating the life and legacy of Deputy Young, my brother and sister, our brothers and sisters, uh, and the family is here. Brother Brandon Smith and Sister Monique Smith, can y'all just wave your hands so they know where you are? Come on, let's give God praise for them. Let's love on them. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Hallelujah. We're loving on them, the entire family, we're loving on you. That, that celebration of life will be Monday at 12 o'clock at the Church of the Highlands. If you are free, if you're serving, uh, please there, be there promptly. I'm sure they would love to see your face in the place as it gives strength to those who are dealing with bereavement. Amen? Amen. It's them in this moment. It'll be you potentially in the next moment. We got to make sure that we cover one another. Amen? All right. I want to also bring uh, to your remembrance on Tuesday. Everybody shout Tuesday. Tuesday. Look at your neighbor. Say go vote. go vote. It matters. We got to be a folk full of the spirit of voting. Make sure that we vote because our vote does count. I don't care what your cousin said. Your vote does count. And I want to uh, give a, a few seconds, uh, well, I ain't going to say a few seconds, but I want to pause for the cause because we have one of our elected officials in the house. Is there a mic over there? We have elected official in the house, Representative Tashina Daniels. Can we give God praise for her? Hey Amen. You come, come this way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Call me Tashina Daniels. A lot of you all know me by Tashina Mars, but since then I've um, jumped the broom. So um, I'm Tashina um, Mars Daniels. Um, and he brought up the fact that we do have an election on Tuesday, and I asked God for discernment to be able to tell you all what I need to say today. And what I need to tell you all is that it's 105 of us in the state house, only 27 of us that look like me. Only 27. We have seven congressional seats, only one that look like us. So on Tuesday, we get an opportunity to select someone, right? And for us in the State House, we have one person who every last one of us can reach out to across the state of Alabama, and that's Anthony Daniels. He's the only one every last elected official that's in the State House who's fighting this battle can actually reach out to and touch. There are 67 counties in Alabama, 67. Only 11 are majority black. Your vote count. We need you to go to the poll. We need you to tell everybody else to go to the polls. I only come out and ask when it's critical. When it's very critical, you see my face. I come out and I ask. 
This is very critical, and I'm out here, and I'm asking you all on Tuesday to really consider Anthony Daniels for Congress because he actually delivers. We can reach out to him. He's accessible, and he's accessible to you all if you reach out to him. Look at somebody say, go vote, go vote, go vote. Make sure that you do your research. Make sure that you make sure that you know who you're voting for. Make sure that you vote. Amen. All right. All right. Uh, I want to also bring this before you Wednesday night. We'll be traveling to New Providence. Some of y'all listen to the announcement. Some of y'all don't. So I got to read it again. Um, Wednesday night, uh, we'll be at New Providence Missionary Baptist Church here in Montgomery, Alabama. We want to fellowship with this church in a major way. They have a brand new pastor, a young pastor, uh, who has just uh, been installed. I believe just a few months ago was installed. Uh, so we definitely want to show up and have a good, good time with him and his church family. Amen. So that means there will be no Bible study will be at New Providence. So we'll try to share the live, uh, but I'd love for you to come in and witness the live because you there live. Amen. Um, I also want to keep this before you. Uh, our new home swag. We put those uh, order sheets out a while ago. They'll be, they'll be uh, needed to be turned in fourth Sunday. I think it's fourth Sunday, 28th. Fourth Sunday of this month. Listen to me. When you turn in your form, you got to turn in the money too. Look at your neighbor say the money too. Ain't no wait till next Friday. Don't be post dating no checks. Amen. <laughs> Turn them over in at the same time. Amen. I want you to help me real quick. Just look across the aisle. Tell somebody you look good today. Find somebody else. Tell them say I see you looking. Like you looking. With your looking self. Let's stand up. We're getting out of here, family. Did y'all learn anything this morning? Oh, yeah. So on Friday, there was a wonderful concert that was here on our campus. Minister Sink, you color. If you were blessed, make some noise. If you were blessed, make some noise. I want to do this. I want to thank God for Sister Anna. Wave your hand, Sister Anna. Uh, Pastor was not here. Sister Anna was running the whole show, and I thank God for her. Can we give God praise for her? Now can we give God praise for all of our ministries, the deacons and all? Everybody who was here, you serve well. I called Minister CQ. He was already on the plane, or rather already in Chicago, and he was talking to me about how hospitable New Home was and how smooth everything went. So I thank God for this church being who it is even when I'm not here. Amen? Also want to do this. Uh, on Friday, we were honored with the opportunity uh, to preach in the celebration of life and legacy for Deacon Naaman Lester uh, uh, Ferris. And his daughter is here. She's upstairs. Can y'all give God praise for her and her family? Come on. Amen. Amen. Do you know him? Old school. I might have to end. I'm going to end with that. Do you know him? Do you know, do you know Jesus Christ, God's son, God's son, do you know, do you know, do you know Jesus Christ, God, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the moment that we've shared. We thank you for the information, the moments of celebration. And we decree and declare that there should be application in our lives, God. We thank you for the lessons and we're ready for the test. God, we thank you that your presence was here, that your Holy Spirit dwelt with us. It's our prayer, Father God, that as we leave this place, it does not stay here. But rather, he walks with us, he talks with us, he guides us safely to our next destination. God, it's our prayer that the person to the left and the right of us, the person in front of us or behind us, gets every breakthrough that they need this week. God, it's our prayer that as you bless us, you continue to bless them. Help us, God, to count our days, to count our blessings, so that, God, we won't forget what you've done for us. You woke us up this morning. You started 
started us on our way. You gave us, Father God, all that we have, and you allowed us to see another bright, sunshiny day. We say thank you. As we leave in this moment, Father God, we pray that all is well. Wherever we're headed, all is well. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, and power forever and evermore. All of God's children ought to shout amen. Amen. Amen again.